I am not encouraged by uh, the progress in the negotiations. We should have uh, uh, achieved um, an agreement uh, well before we actually arrived here. That was what I was hoping for. But then um, uh, it hasn't happened and difficult negotiations are going on on key issues. Um, but uh, more lately, that is by last evening, I think uh, Brazil has done an excellent job in coordinating the discussions. And so uh, it seems we will have a minimum, a minimalist uh, text uh, with which uh, Bhutan will not really be happy. And as such, I'm going to propose uh, to uh, the international community that uh, we accept this minimalist text as the very basic and the minimum of what each of us as countries and as leaders will aspire to do when we return home. And that each of us should aim to do far more than what we have agreed universally. Well, I have not uh, personally participated in the, uh, in the actual uh, negotiations, but my delegation has been. And I think what Brazilians have done is uh, excluded uh, the uh, more contentious but uh, non-essential you know, elements in the text and focused on what constitute the main elements or the main, you know, the, the core, core uh, elements uh, of the text. And on that, in particular, on sustainability and on green ecology, a green economy, for instance, I think uh, fairly good progress has been made. General acceptance has been reached. But with respect to uh, financing and on the institutional arrangements, there are still difficulties. I think there's far more to it than financing. I think there is definitely uh, much more that uh, each country can do, uh, be uh, it a country that is poor, underdeveloped, or a rich and powerful country. I think, firstly, there is much more, as I said, that individual countries can do at the sovereign, at the subnational, and at the community level. Having said that, I think uh, finance uh, or ODA flows from uh, the developed and industrialized countries to the developing countries, I think, is key because otherwise, the, whereas there may be the sovereign will, poorer countries will not have the capacity to undertake the kind of sustainable development activities or activities that are sustainable. Well, uh, there have been uh, many who have um, expressed curiosity uh, and uh, surprise uh, in the uh, proposal of Bhutan to promote happiness as the end objective and the purpose of development. And uh, I say that there is nothing unique or exceptional about this idea because happiness is the very basic desire of every human individual and should therefore the, be the purpose uh, of every government, every state, and every leader uh, to try and create conditions whereby individuals can pursue happiness. Now, happiness, uh, as we promote, uh, through the development paradigm known as gross national happiness, is uh, one where we believe that, uh, based on, it's based on the belief that uh, the human individual has needs far more than just material needs and there are the more important or the equally important uh, needs of the mind and so uh, GNH in fact is a model that is holistic that is sustainable and that is inclusive beginning with firstly promoting sustainability the survival of human life and all other life forms that in fact constitute the life support systems for human beings Two then to aspire and through, after sustainable living, what we need is to promote well-being. And well-being is about justice. It's about equity. It's about democracy. Uh, and, and through well-being, happiness is what one would hope to be able to achieve. Through well-being, individuals would have the right, the freedom, to be able to choose, aspire for, and find happiness. That is what 
genius is all about, really. Happiness, I think, is a universal value. And uh, it is not conditioned, I think, by uh, race, by, uh, uh, by religion, um, or by, by history. I think happiness, as I said, is a universal value uh, that, yes, to a large extent, is conditioned by the environment, by the political, by the social, by the, the, the psychological you know, uh, and uh, various other economic uh, you know, uh, aspects uh, that uh, condition the way a human individual is able to live and pursue life. And it is, um, uh, the, the way we measure is <clears throat> both subjective and, uh, and, and objective, you know, looking at the subjective feelings of an individual by asking, for instance, how do you feel? You know, are you happy? And so on. It's both subjective as well as based on objective you know, uh, conditions uh, uh, which are the responsibilities of uh, the government, of the state, to, to improve and, and, and develop. Uh, we have uh, developed an indexed, uh, index that uh, includes nine dimensions. And those nine dimensions, in turn, are elaborated into some 72 variables. And it is against these 72 variables uh, that uh, we measure both the objective as well as the subjective you know, uh, conditions and the feelings of an individual to assess whether an individual and a nation is happy or not. We conducted um, the last uh, happiness uh, survey um, in, in 2010, and I'm happy to report that the vast majority of the Bhutanese people are happy. Be happy and be serious about pursuing happiness, for that is the meaning and purpose of human life, and therefore also the function and responsibility of any individual who is elected or otherwise to serve the interest of humanity.